Welcome back to the Pursuit of Accuracy. I'm Josh and I've got Chris from Midwest Long Range with me. And today we are talking to you about scopes. So this is really for like beginners. If you're getting into some sort of rifle shooting and you're looking at all these scope options, you don't know what they mean. We're gonna try and break them down in a layman's terms for you today. And it's something that I don't feel like is talked about enough. People typically are like really data driven when they come to scopes. They talk about first focal plane, second MOA, uh, mill radian. I want to break it down what it means to you as it pertains to what you might or might not be doing with the scope. So big shout out to Tracked Optics. This video is in cooperation with those guys. Um, John and John, the owners, really good guys and I run their scopes basically on all my rim fires. This is my like precision rim fire optic. So this one is a track torque. ELR, it is an MRAD scope. So it is mill turret, mill reticle, and it is first focal plane. First focal plane, second focal plane, you got MOA and mill radian. So mill radian is a metric system. One mill radian is in tenth of clicks. So you have 10 clicks per one mill. And at 100 yards, the mill radian is 3.66 inches, something like that. Um, versus MOA, pretty much everybody knows this, at 100 yards, one MOA is about one inch. It's not exactly an inch, but it's about an inch. So the important difference here is when you break them down into how that relates to you as a shooter, is that an MOA scope is typically quarter clicks. So four clicks. So for every click you move that, you're moving your reticle like in a quarter inch increment. So yep. mill radian is a tenth. So even though it starts out at 3.6 inches, one tenth of a mil, which is one click, is gonna move you about 0.36 inches. So the big deal there is if you're shooting zeroed at 50 and you've got to shoot targets all the way out to 400 yards with a 22, that's a lot of elevation. Um, so for a mil radian scope, you're talking about 21 mils, which is 210 clicks. Exactly, and, and like you said, that's gonna come back again to what sport are you doing? Yep. What is your purpose? If you're in PRS, we're under a 90 second or yeah, two time, minute yep. time frame, mill is going to dominate that sport just because how much faster yeah, we can get on can target, we can dial. Elevation faster. Uh, I'm not, I mean, guys obviously can compete with MOA and yeah. several have, but oh, they, yeah. they're going to spend a lot more time dialing if, the, if they're yeah. not doing holdovers. But in F class, you know, yeah, you need that very distance. finite, and then really yeah. in F class, sometimes it's not even quarter, it's eight quarter, inch, it's eighth yeah. inch yeah. clicks. They and go even finer. And you'll never see that with mill radian. Mill radian is always <laughs> a tenth is a click. That's It's always the case. So, yep. and Chris is talking about, there are specific scopes made for bench rest or paper style shooting F class, um, whether you're shooting NRA, doesn't matter. If you're shooting fixed distance, you'll see some scopes that are eighth click MOA. Um, because at 50 yards, when you're shooting a mill scope versus yeah. MOA scope, you might have to live with the fact that you might be a little left, a little high, a little low. Because you be in between clicks sometimes. Yeah, because you're talking about like 0.18 inches per click. So almost mm -hmm. two tenths of an inch. So, you know, you may not be centered up all the time where MOA, you're much more likely to get it perfectly centered up. And one thing I think a lot of videos miss on not talking about is the fact that if you're that new shooter, you're going to go shoot NRL 22, PRS 22, NRL, PRS, whatever, precision rifle as a new shooter, you're gonna be afforded more opportunities. And what I mean by that is that the competition, you are not allowed to coach other shooters. You can't tell them you're missing left, whatever. Now as a new shooter, you are allowed to get those win calls from people because they wanna help you become successful and get you into the sport. And you're gonna be soaking in a lot of information because there's no shortage of pro shooters at competitions that love nothing more than to talk to new guys <laughs> and tell them exactly how it is. So if you don't show up there with a mill scope, all those pretty much like semi-pro and pro shooters, they're all shooting mill. So when they're trying to give you little tidbits of information or you're picking up, you know, little sidebar conversations, always in mill. They're always in mill. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, out there I was, I was three tenths off the left edge. I was, they're always in mill. So you're losing that benefit of communicating in the same language that 90% of the competitors in the field are, and you know, that's mill radian, so. That's yeah. a really good point. I mean, if everybody's communicating in the same yeah. unit of measurement, yeah. you know, it just makes sense. Yeah. It, I, we could be talking about something after the fact, and I can say, well, you know, I was 
probably three tenths right or, or yeah. something off of the off and the you're side. You're going to get a lot of valuable information off the people who shoot for you, or you know, even if you get a spotting scope, a lot of spotting scopes have you know the newer ones have mill reticles. Um, another benefit that is also not talked about a lot is there are times, and this is PRS and NRL. If you're thinking about getting into this, there are times when there's a stage and there's five targets and five positions. You got to dial every time you move, and you got your little card, and it's telling you all your elevations for these targets and you're just slow for whatever reason something happens maybe on a mag issue whatever but you're in that fourth position you realize i do not have time to dial i got like 10 seconds i need to move and shoot this now if you're shooting a mill scope maybe your fourth target you just shot was at 13.1 mils maybe your next target is at 15 mils it's really easy to in your head go oh, 1.9 or 2 get you close to hold over and engage now take those same kind of deals, multiply that by three. So now you're at maybe 39 and a half MOA and you need to get to 60. What's the answer? Like right now, you know, unless you're a mathematician, that math is harder to come up with and yeah. it's harder to just interpolate that onto like you see one mil, you see two mil, we know it's close to two mils and go. That can really save you because it's just simpler, even for Americans, you know, we're, not, we're basically born and bred on an MOA yep. because, you know, half, quarter, three quarter, one inch, that makes sense to us. But even being American and growing up on that, having mill tents is so much easier to just work in your head really fast and come up with that. So um, I guess as a kind of key wrap up point, if you're shooting fixed distance and you know you're going to shoot some sort of bench rest, then MOA and second focal plane is probably where you want to be. Keep that reticle nice and small, any magnification shooting fixed distance so you're not having to worry about, you know, measurements in the reticle being true to what you need to do. But if you're shooting action sports, PRS, NRL, whatever the case is, or you just like to shoot at different distances, first focal plane, mill radians, probably where you need to end up.